when you said, oh, I want to go into AI, I remember saying to you like, that's you, I'll, I'll help you grow and do whatever, but I don't want to do it. We were, we were surprised at the quality because at that time we knew things are only going to get better. And I understand why people are skeptic about it. Because you go into a lot of detail about your past addiction and realizing how your video game addiction, how it affected you and how, what you did to change that. I'm just going to go all in and I went all in and I've never looked. But my biggest fear was just not knowing um, what to trust. If people don't at least use it and understand it, they're going to get burned so bad by it. Just like, wow, we, we've got no chance, we're doomed. This is, this is why Hollywood is scared. I think voice acting may become a big thing. And it's completely different to what the photo is saying, but they'll probably just think it's a real photo and it's absolutely not a real photo. That's why, I, and that's why I love what you do. I can literally remember you sent a message on Telegram, like there's someone from Inter Milan in my emails and I don't really know what he's on about. And I'm like, no, integrity and maintaining your integrity is, is number one. You, if you, as soon as you sell your soul, you're done. everyone, welcome to Intelliverse. I'm Heather Cooper and I'm your host on this journey through the world of generative AI. I'm an edu AI educator and consult and I focus on visual storytelling across social media platforms. I'm mainly on Twitter or formerly known as Twitter, but now X. And I have several other platforms and I'm focused on on top of that with news newsletters, with Substack, ConvertKit, YouTube. You can find me all over the place. But I'm here because I like to talk about storytelling and how AI, generative AI, is shape, reshaping creativity and the way we work. So here on this podcast, we're going to talk to brilliant minds behind generative AI, founders, builders, creators, who are revolutionizing tech and visual storytelling. I approach these conversations as a lifelong learner, and I'm aiming to make it a little bit easier to break down some complex topics for everyone. If, even if you're not really into AI, you're just a little bit curious, or if you are uh, very enthusiastic about AI, uh, please join us as we go through this and talk to uh, people about the ever-evolving intersection of technology and creativity. So today I am so excited because I have my good friend, business partner, chief of staff, Thomas Haynes, also known as The Game of Life. When I met Thomas, that was when I first came on to Twitter as a platform, and he was my coach to help me build my account from just having a personal account to a professional account and building up the authority and learning how to navigate the game of Twitter and the game of social media. He used to have a anonymous platform, a persona on Twitter where he did not show his face and he went by Thomas, the game of life. But he has since gone to his name. It's Thomas Haynes on X and throughout his brand. But he has been integral to me learning how to navigate social media because I was completely new to this and learning how to write online, learning how to communicate with people. And throughout that time, Thomas is a very big skeptic of AI. He really didn't want much to do with it at all. But since he helps me create, do a lot of my planning, organizing, and creating content, he ended up being pretty uh, immersed in it, whether he wanted to or not. But he's grown to have the different types of feelings of it over time. And I just want to talk to him today about his journey uh, and how he handles AI, how he approaches it, how he uses it, and some fears and concerns about that. So welcome, Thomas. It's so good to have you on this capacity because you work so hard to help me build this podcast and my my platform. Be here. So it's tell us. Exciting. We're, we're doing something like this now, mate. It's been, what, around 18 months? Um, yes. Late 2022. Around yes. just before just before ChatGPT four or ChatGPT three was it back then? Yeah, a few months it, before. Yeah, just before that, and you were very into visuals and looking at different kind of things there. And then ChatGPT came on that 
changed. Yes, it did. It did. And at the time, I just, that was my first viral thread, right? So um, just writing, I was so excited about uh, the things that ChatGPT could do and how I just wanted to share with people how it could have helped them in whatever they were doing, at least on social media, whether they were in marketing or visual you know, studio type things, if they were money, Twitter, if they were fitness, whatever, you could learn how to use it to help you with your online business. When was the first time you used generative AI as in uh, like chat GPT or anything like that? It wasn't so, right away. No, it wasn't right away. You know, I, I remember when, um, because we'd been working together for like, what, two months, um, I think I was still anonymous at the time. And I was still very much just kind of like a growth guide for social media. Um, and when you said, oh, I want to go into AI, I remember saying to you like, that's you, I'll, I'll help you grow and do whatever, but I don't want anything to do with it. I don't particularly <laughs> like it. I don't particularly know what direction it's going to go in. And there's still, there's still worrying things, but I think you also have to look at positives, um, in the present day, but I think. I think it took me a couple of months to first use it. I remember I had some friends in, in money Twitter and when ChatGPT got launched, because I did a lot of ghostwriting as well. Um, you know, a few months after I remember there were people just getting chopped from agencies left, right and center. And I just, I'd heard people say the writing was really poor and in ChatGPT, it didn't really give you what you wanted. So I was like, I went in just to see what it could produce. Um, because I knew a lot of my friends were getting the chop. Um, I wanted to see what it could deliver. And yeah, in terms from a writing for like a, a brand or a business, um, back then it, it just wasn't worth it. Um, so I was surprised that people were getting rid of people, but when you start to prompt a little bit better, it could give you that baseline of text really well. And I then understood why people were getting rid of writers and stuff like that, because why spend two grand to get someone to write for you for a month where you can spend $30 and then you can get at least 50% of a platform and then you have more editing to do, but yeah. So it was a couple of months after, um, and nowadays I use it, I use it more for research these days. Um, but obviously there's also other platforms like Complexity and, and Claude nowadays, and there's so much. What about with um, visuals? I was the visual AI art AI generating images and videos and things like that. But uh, we were going to be in, we entered that Gen, th Gen uh, what's it called? Gen 48. That contest with Gen, Gen 48, yes, for the runaway. And you and I were a team, you were like the team leader that so it was to create a short film uh, all using all ai generated tools and you had just started working with midjourney so you leonardo and midjourney you jumped into like the hardest one midjourney which took me quite a while to you know to actually feel comfortable with but i had a lot of prompts and you had quite a few examples that we were working with all the time so was that the first time you started using ai arch Tools yeah. or image generators. I think I remember I sat down with I sat down with a friend because he's um he's a photographer, he's a web art designer, he's an artist, he, he's everything. Um and he was always because he's been in that kind of position, he was like, How is AI gonna wipe me out basically? And I remember because I've been doing some work with you and you've been producing some crazy visuals, I was like, Yo, bro, let's let's sit down for a night. And let's just go in Leonardo and try some stuff out. And we jumped into Leonardo and just for like a few hours, we were just prompting. We were just creating random stuff. Um, we didn't really know what we were doing, but then we got slightly better at it and we were like, okay, let's, let's try mid journey. And this was still when mid journey took like the fast hours. Now it, it just creates insanely quick. It still took quite a bit of time. Yeah. And we were playing around with it and we were trying to, we were trying to recreate his dog, um, and uploading some images of this dog to try and make it into like a cartoon book. And we were, we were surprised at the quality because of that time we knew things are only going to get better. 
Um, and then I think a few days later, we were like, yo, should we, should we throw this into a runway? Because we'll be using your runway and we were playing around with that. Uh, and then, yeah, shortly after we, me and you jumped into Gen 48 and we created, we created a few films around, or well, mini films around that period, didn't we? We put a few on YouTube as well. I know we created the house, we created we the remorse, and done lots of trailers as well, haven't we? Yes. And for a time you were working with trying to get so many videos per day or videos in a certain time period for YouTube, right? You started using generative AI like ChatGPT to write scripts and um, to help you with that, correct? For the Yes. In 11 Labs, you started using quite a few different, and because you were working with someone else as a client, I believe, right? Or for a challenge? Yeah, I think I had, I had a variety of clients back then. Um, and remember, I think, I think I actually pulled you in on that one client as well, where we were creating certain, certain artwork, um, because when, when mid journey started getting, which update was mid journey where it was pretty big. Is it mid journey? I think we're at around five, I think five point five. it went from five to 5.2. I don't think it was quite at six yet. No, yeah, it was, I, it was, it was five something, I think, because I remember when that happened, there yeah. were people who were getting really interested um, in, oh, can you create some art for me and just like throw some captions behind it, do a bit of writing. Like I don't want the writing to be generated, but, which I understand. Um, but I, I want some really cool artwork or whatever. And you can, you can just create some insane stuff. Like some of the stuff I was sending yesterday is. <laughs> it's ridiculous what it can do now. Yeah. But back then, more and more people were getting interested in it. Uh, and there was more and more demand from people just to have, just have artwork generated. Um, because I've, I think people felt that it was a lot more difficult than people think it is. Um, if you sat down for a few hours, there's a lot to learn. Like, especially when you learn about like yeah. waiting of prompts, angles. All the dash dash stuff, like I'm probably still a new compared to someone like you and some other much more advanced people, but it's not too difficult to get in and learn. And, you know, we, we see nowadays people are generating stuff in mid journey and then they go to somewhere like runway, they go to somewhere like Luma, Pika, they throw that in there and they go to make the feet, they upscale it, they use 11 labs to get voiceover in. They use Udio or Suno to get their own music. Like it, it's wild to think because you can just, you can just use AI to create everything. Like you don't, you don't need anything else. Well, and that's, that's just the crazy thing about it. And I understand why people are skeptic about it. Well, in you, at least you approached it in a way and I appreciate it with everything else to learn how to do it. You don't just go out and just start playing around with things. And you have a purpose. You are careful not to get too in depth with something before, because of your history and you write a lot in your newsletter that people, I encourage people to go and read, uh, the game of life newsletter is an excellent resource. And it talks about, because you, you go into a lot of detail about your past addiction and realizing how your video game addiction, how it affected you and how, what you did to change that. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because you were heavily involved, heavily, heavily a gamer. And yeah. now you are not at all, but you put your attention and your uh, passions into other things. Yeah. And that was, that was a big realization for me. Um, I was 25. It was the day I turned 25. Um, my her sister, she, she brought me an Xbox cake. And, you know, looking from the outside in, it's a pretty good gift. I, I spent hours and hours on my Xbox at that period. Um, it was, it was a couple of years after COVID. So I remember after leaving university, um, I came back home to my parents and I was like, okay, I, I'm, I want to move out. And my sister, she wanted me to move in with her because she didn't want to get a tenant and whatnot. And I get on really well with my sister. So I moved in with my sister and then literally two weeks later, COVID hit. I was already a terrible gamer. And um, throughout college, I 
racked up several hours on, on multiple games. Any of the big games I probably spent time on. So I was someone who's just come back from uni, didn't really know what to do. Um, I had multiple various addictions and I now have had no job, no friends. I had no gym or anything to go to. So I just, when, when COVID hit, I was just waking up midday. I was just on Xbox. This was, this was the last game I was did it to was Apex Legends. And I was just grinding ranked every single day. I had friends to play with from America, Australia, Scotland, like people in Germany. I had friends from all over the world. And I just go on and I grind, grind, grind. And then I finally got a job um, working some factory stuff. But all I cared about was gaming. And on my 25th birthday, I literally, I have, I still have the image because it did so much for me. And I don't know, it was just an epiphany or a eureka moment that she put a little 25 in it and just, like, she just sat it on my lap and I was just like, what am I doing? Like I'm 25 years old and I've not really achieved anything I've known in my life. Um, what? I, I need to change. I need to do, I need to do something different. Like the direction I was going in, it just kind of sunk home, you know, 25, you know, going towards late twenties. Um, you know, you need to, you need to do something about that. So the very day after is when I create my first Twitter account and that just changed everything for me. I, obviously you can't quit stuff called Turkey. So I started playing chess instead and I still play chess. I love chess and that helped me quit the video games because it was the burps and grind just to build something, whatever it was, I was just like, I need to make my own money. I want to be my own boss. And that happened around late 2022 so around 18 months later maybe a little bit after that i actually got fired from one of my jobs um and when i got fired i was making roughly the same as i was on twitter as i was um in my job so i was like i'm just gonna go all in and i went all in and i've never looked i was with you for part of that journey toward the end there and i really had no idea how much uh, these things had shaped your path. You know, I, uh, you were so helpful to me in planning every little thing that we did. We're building up in becoming, because I wasn't always just in AI. I was, you know, trying to find my niche and trying to, you know, figure out what exactly I was doing online. But you were um, able to help steer me because you can always see the undercurrent, what's happening on, uh, at least for Twitter X in showing like how to work with the algorithm. And it's changed a lot now, but back then we had understood how to, how it worked and mm -hmm. just working with that. And actually just the craft of writing was really instrumental with how you teaching me how to write and structure the flow of the, a thread or even just the basic the basic post, basic tweet. Um, and at first we didn't, you cautioned me against using too many visuals, right? And it's crazy how that has changed because yeah, before yeah. it's like, you don't want to overload with visuals. And now it's kind of like, I can't even imagine. I almost never just write something or post something without a visual because, and it's perfect for me because visuals were my thing because they are easier to understand and you could tell a better story with it. You play chess still to this day and how it shapes what you're doing and gives you an outlet so that you have, and you've done other things, uh, Taekwondo or karate, Taekwondo, mm, you karate, and mixed yeah. martial arts, karate. And, um, and how, you know, you just boxing and you are very, uh, you are determined not to go back down the path of gaming and you know how dangerous it is. And you talk about it a lot and for people who are who might have that tendency or who could go into that and not recognize the danger that it could pose if it's not, well, it's hard. Some people just can't regulate it. Right. But finding other ways to do things. But when you were initially, you were, uh, oh, you didn't trust AI and you still, you know, you're very much a skeptic of AI. What was the biggest fear though, from that? Like, Obviously. That's, well, that's a good question. Um, 
I know a lot of people are worried about jobs um, and, and people losing things like that. And, and I get that. Uh, um, but my biggest fear was just not knowing um, what to trust. Like you can see so many things, like you can create so much now with AI. And I was speaking to someone not long ago and he was, he was watching something online and it was basically all AI generated. And it was a mock of like the American presidential debate. And it was two randomly generated characters and they were just debating each other, all AI. And there was thousands of people watching this stream. And then they were like voting for who they would, um, vote for. And it was just completely AI. It was completely fake. Um, and it's things like that where I'm like, wow, people, I get a bit of fun, whatever. But there's things now, and this is why I love community notes on X, because you, you see some stuff and I've seen some images now that are AI generated, but I did not know they were AI generated. Um, there, there needs to be some form of line and I know Instagram have done it and I know YouTube have done it, but you have to mark something when you say it's AI generated, but there's, there's no reason to stop, um, people not doing that. And I think. People, people just don't understand how fast this is going to move. Like what, how fast AI has moved for late 2022 when ChatGPT came out to where it is now. The next two to three years, like people were talking about by 2027, we'll have some supercomputer that's cleverer than the whole world or whatever. Like we don't know, we don't know what that's going to do. And I, and I read somewhere as well, that I think it was either Zuck or um, it may have been uh, maybe Mark Zuckerberg, that he created a company where he, or, or some entrepreneur created a company and they were like, look, what we're going to do is we're going to use AI to collect data from every single research paper that's ever been done. And they got all these research papers and they put them all into this system. They create an algorithm for it. And they basically went in with the idea of if we can use all the data that's ever been done in the world, we should be able to find solutions for things quicker. But it was shut down within two days because the solutions it gave back, no one knows what they were, but they did not like what it said. Um, so they shut it down immediately. So who, who knows what that is said? But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a strange place because AI can have, it can have so many benefits, like especially health benefits and how we can even move forward as humans, because there's, there's a lot of problems that it can solve. But I guess it can also cause a lot of problems that comes with anything. But I think people, if people don't at least use it and understand it, they're going to get burned so bad by it because people who do use it and understand it, um, they're just going to be leagues ahead. Like in the next few years, it, it's going to be crazy. And I know some companies come out and say, we won't use AI for certain things, but the people that do use it, um, they're just going to be so far ahead of everyone else that you're just going to get left behind. Um, and I don't see, I don't see any kind of, like I remember when Elon came out and was like, no, no, no AI, no AI, nothing. Two months later, he has XAI as a company. And it's just like, there, there you go. <laughs> well, D, it's funny because I like use you as someone who understands enough about AI to be able to talk to me about what I'm doing every day because I'm so immersed in it. But you also give me, um, it's a, it's a nice check on the pulse of what people that are in my bubble, um, online, including my family too, because there no one in my house is really into AI at all. And, um, but do you feel like just running ideas with you to see like what you feel about certain things, it gives me a nice it's like a more of a feedback thing. Do you, is it uncomfortable sometimes or how do you vision yourself to see how you're kind of like on the, not on the fence, but you're kind of in one foot in both worlds where the majority of the public, the, they are just not into this at all. And if they use it, they're not even really paying attention to it or don't think of it as AI. And, but for you, you know, the potential and how it can be used in for good and for bad. Is it like a weird feeling to be stuck between two worlds? Yeah, it is because you want to, 
you you see all these really great things it can do like you know it can you can there's talks of you can put a watch on your wrist and then ai can detect you're getting sick before you even get sick so you can take the right measures to let so there's some crazy things like that and you know i'm i've no doubt that some diseases and some horrible stuff that goes on like it could it could seriously help with things like that um but then you 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 know, you're watching one video on that and then you'll watch another video and they've created drones which can literally just wipe out an entire town. It's because it's the AI's nature to allow it to just go through an entire forest and just like, wow, we've, we've got no chance, we're doomed. So you go from, you swing from one place to the other. Um, and that's why I think it's really important that we get, we get some form of regulation but we also get some form of competition, which is what is, which is what's really good because we don't want, we don't want one company to have global authority over AI because that would be disastrous. If one company has complete, I know Nvidia is absolutely blowing up these AI chips and stuff that they've been doing in there. They, they dropped about 500 billion in the past few days, but they were the biggest stock market in the world. So I can see why people may be concerned about that. But again, that just shows the growth of what AI could have. So we need regulation and we need lots of different companies to, to keep other companies in check so that if one company does something, you don't just lose all of AI, you have other companies and various things that you can do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult because I'll, I'll stay on the fence. Um, but I will see how I can utilize AI because you know, there's you know, with what we do and how much social media and business we've done. If there's things you can automate and stuff like that to make your life easier, it's a bit, I like to spend more time with your family, I like to make more money. People are going to take advantage of that and they should take advantage of that. You know, I saw a really good tweet the other day is that um, someone doesn't want AI to write and do their job for them. They want AI to do their laundry for them. They want AI to cook, cook their dinner, clean stuff. And I get that. You want it to do all these tasks that you won't want to do so you can do what you want to do um and that's and that's what i'm pushing for um i i just hope it goes up well i think that yeah that there are a lot of things where it doesn't have to be to one extreme or the other that you can find a lot of ways to use it you like to travel and uh you like to you know you're fitness plans and things like that you can use it would make it simpler to do things like that or if you're out traveling somewhere to generate like find out the history of this city that you're visiting or what does this mean when you see this or um the things to do planning a trip where you can just sit there you don't need to go to a travel agent or work with a program you can set up your own trip you know and you know with an outline agenda and figure out you know, links to hotels and with how to, like those types of things for recipes, cooking and, you know, cooking for gluten-free or whatever yeah. people are into keto or, you know, what do you think that there's a way to kind of balance that with the, the simple generative AI? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. Like I saw, um, I saw he's, he's a really, he's a really popular fitness guy on Twitter and he he saw a post about, um, someone put into chat GPT. I want to test my VO2 max. How do I go about this procedure and whatnot? Um, and I remember doing VO2 max at uni because I did sports science at uni and I read it myself and I, and I concurred with what he said. And he was like, for 90% of the population, what chat GPT said would be absolutely fine. They could easily do it. They could follow this protocol and boom, you're away. And you have. And this is why people got worried about misinformation because, you know, you're kind of trusting what AI spits out back at you. But if the information is genuine, you have so much at your disposal. You can, you can plan, as you said, you can do all the trips. You can use it for so many different things. You can create a really basic workout just to get you started. Like you don't need to go and find a coach or someone do that, be a personal trainer. Of course, there's certain benefits if you've got a certain finite situation, like it's not a, le a level expert, but well, then again, in three years, if we've got some mad supercomputers, it well could be an expert. Um, and then you go back to what's this is AI, the doom claim again. No, there is things you can definitely use it for basic things. You can, 
it can pretty much give you so much info and that's what I mainly use it for is research. Um, and then you put the same research from chat GPT, you put it into complexity and it gives you something slightly different. The quality gives you something slightly different. So it's good you have the different things because it can give you different feedback and stuff. But I saw another point as well is that, um, a lot of people don't like Google anymore because of the SEO. Me and you have done a little bit about SEO with business and trying to get high rankings and stuff. Google is now just filled with SEO. You know, you type in something, it's these guys have made it tailored. So it pushes the ranking spots and stuff like that. You can't actually find what you want to find. Um, so using LLMs and things like that can, can remove that. And then you can get a baseline, all the information and stuff you want on. And yeah, it can, it can be your starting point. And then you maybe go to humans and things after on whatever. But I think on, or in some degree, most businesses will end up using AI because we live in a capitalist world and people want to make money. Um, I just think that's, that's I think the way they're it's using it go. now. Mm, I do. I, they're I already using it. Well. In yeah. The, the biggest companies and small ones too. I mean, there's just too easy, too many things you can use that make generating names or you know, ideas for a content plan or whatever, or for financial, like, uh, savings and whatever. There's all kinds of different things that people are using it for. And they're probably not necessarily admitting it, or maybe they don't even realize that's what you're doing, that it's AI. They're just using business tools. But I want to ask you, because we, since we both have gotten more into film and we, you know, took a course with Curious Refuge and trying to understand filmmaking, not because we want to become AI, you know, filmmakers or producers, but we have these tools now. And one of the things that I love about visual and AI and all of these tools together, LLMs, is it gives us people that never thought that this was possible to be able to tell a story this way and that we're creative. Right. But we can't, we didn't have a way to share these ideas the way, you know, in how to structure a story and how, what type of visuals to use, voices, sound effects, and all these different things. And even advanced techniques with, you know, upscaling and uh, a lot of pretty complex, I mean, we've learned a lot in the last year with how to, you know, uh, work with different video editing tools, filmmaking tools. And right now, you know, we're using podcast equipment that we probably wouldn't have um, thought about before. We wouldn't have necessarily thought we had an opportunity to do something like this without having more money or more freedom and things available to us. What's your dream story that you'd like to tell or a dream video, series, film, what? Well, this is, it's an interesting question because, um, you know, there's, I, I know someone on Twitter and he has, he is on the verge of releasing the full story of the Bible in generative AI. Um, he has something like over 20,000 generations on runway, um, wow. which is pretty insane. Yeah. I think it's even one that me and you have. Um, so that is something yeah, which is, <laughs> that's something, yeah, which is awesome because, you know, it's not, we don't, we don't have something like that, which is told anywhere else. Um, and he is just on his own back, just generated, 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 and he's prompted and he's crafted and he's had to edit as well and do these things, but he's going to release a full feature length film about the Bible and AI, um, which is awesome. Um, I have a few ideas yeah there's there's more, one of my first feature length films um, would be the brazilian dream about a football kid in brazil in favelas um, that would be that would be a really awesome idea i've pretty much written that um, that's definitely something we'll oh, wow. do in the next year once once things get slightly better and we have a little bit more time um but you can just get creative. And I think this is, this is what a lot of people get attracted to because yeah, you can talk about how you don't need as much skill and things like that, but this is, this is leveling out the entire playing field. And this is, this is why Hollywood is scared. I mean, Hollywood should be scared because they don't, they don't really produce any good, any that much good films anymore. Do they like what in the past five years, I can probably name 
three films that I've gone to the cinema and I've actually thoroughly enjoyed. Like the quality's just dropped so much and people get tired of uh, trying to push whatever across in these films. And now these tools are here and it's going to level the complete playing field and you can just have a bunch of mates come together. Okay, they, they wanted to create a certain series about whatever. They can just go and do it now. In the next, in the next year or two, we're going to see full HR AI films. We're going to see full HR AI series, um, whether people like it or not. Um, and if, you know, people like to be entertained, it's always about human psychology, right? So if people want to watch this stuff and you can produce something which is visually appealing with a compelling storyline, people are going to watch it. And I think there's going to be a major, a major shift. One thing I am still skeptical on is, is the voices and stuff like that. I think voice acting may become a big thing because I don't, I know like when you go on YouTube and you hear an AI voice over a, a video, it's not great. Um, people don't like to hear that. People still like to hear, hear real voices and there's already a big anime, you know, kind of crowd and things like that. So maybe voice acting will be one thing that a lot of people, um, stick to. And a lot of people are drawn to, but we're going to see a lot of AI series and AI films. And, and I'd like to do it myself. It'd be fun. You can, you can write the story yourself. Some people may use ChatGPT to write it, but I think, you know, it can, it doesn't understand human nature like humans do. And that's, and that's one thing I don't right. know if AI will ever be able to, I don't think it'll be able to understand human nature. You need to, there's a balance to find so that you can utilize AI um, to make your work better and you can work alongside with it, but it can't, can't replace it. And I don't think it ever will be able to replace it. We've talked about a few ideas because we like history and like military strategy and things like that. And, you know, the more improvements that come to these video and image tools, it's just amazing because we could tell, even if it's series on, you know, the greatest battles like showing, like recreating little portions or showing just kind of like the, the aesthetic of what it looked like at the time, the layout, you know, in Kanai, you know, for Hannibal and the Romans and just going into like so many little things or, uh, Viking dramas, uh, the Native Americans and in South American, just different indigenous people. And even recreating scenes, chess matches or football, boxing. You are very gifted writing um, excellent threads, and you've done different ones that were uh, based on, you know, it was a World War II. I think you had a, a really excellent thread about is it Finnish, the Finnish soldier um, that he was a farmer. Mm, yeah. Can you imagine putting that thread into ChatGPT or Perplexity and asking for? you know, ideas on how you could do a script for that particular video, if you were to create and then, you know, using parts of that and you, you're very good at using, you know, different props in a way that can create something. Um, could you imagine using it like that to tell the story? Yeah. To, re to repurpose your stories because you wouldn't have had the ability to do that. And with the writing, the flow, um, it's so much, it's, I see it like that where and it's, I know a lot of people don't want to see AI generated things, but if it's something that can help you learn or just entertain with curiosity, I think, do you think that people would be more interested in like, that would be a way for them to be able to experience AI generated media? Yeah, because you're putting, you're putting an edgy, you know, there's an entertainment aspect, but you're also putting an education aspect as well behind it because people, especially if you're doing it through something like history. You can, you can send a message across it and, and, I, and I think that could be a good way to go about it. And you know, you just said then people don't want to see AI generated content. I mean, I can almost guarantee that people have seen something that's AI generated. They don't even know it. I know people who work on certain social media brands, such as fairly big companies, um, and they need to, and they need to edit a photo and they need to generate, uh, you know, use something different. And it's completely different to what the photo is saying, but they're probably just think it's a real photo and it's absolutely not a real photo. It's, it's kind of like Photoshop and steroids, isn't it really? Um, 
Yeah. Photoshop. Photoshop's been around for a while and people have been editing images and stuff like that. It's just because it's more easily accessible now that people get worried about it. But uh, AI education, that's why, I, and that's why I love what you do is try and educate people about this kind of stuff. And if you can combine the education or entertainment, you know, you can definitely create some really cool stuff. And I, and I think people, people will, um, people are already starting to do it. I know there's still a lot of pushback against it. Um, it is, it is going to be interesting because like we had the mid journey, like we had the chat GPT, similar to Sora, kind of their announcement, still not here though. Um, there's going to be some form of announcement which comes in which is going to create so much noise that it might even like it's going to tip the scales one way or another um and and when that happens i i think we'll get a clearer picture of how ai is going to move forward but like i said with nvidia and, and what they're doing with ai chips and things i i, I don't see it going anywhere at all well, to, that brings me to our, one of our, the things that we're most proud of, um, that we accomplished together and uh, just individ individually, but our campaign that we, we were able to do with Inter, and well, you know, for the Champions League and how that was really like, you know, you were not that into, um, visual AI visuals and oh, uh, generative that AI, but it. that ended up. And that was another thing where it's, it was able to become, go, it takes something that you are passionate about and make it give you an opportunity to participate in a way you probably never dreamed of. And what was that like for the, was there like a light bulb moment when we were talking about it when we first? Yeah. Found? Like I, I didn't believe you at first, did I? Cause I, I can literally remember you sent the message on Telegram, like, there's someone from into my land in my emails and I don't really know what he's on about. And I'm like, no, no one from into my land is in our emails. No one, no one from into my land wants to come and work with us. So the fact that they actually did want to work with us and, but, uh, um, they were, they were so interested in something like that in the AI world. Um, yeah, it definitely put my interest because I, I do enjoy football. Uh, it is great, and especially the Champions League. It's it's the best competition in football, and the fact they just reached the final the previous year and they wanted some posters being generated as promo on the day of the game, they wanted to tag our names in it. Um, it did get me very interested. I remember I think that's when I finally submitted to getting a Mid Journey um subscription, like fully. And I was like, I'll get the Mid Journey subscription because we need to generate some good stuff. Um, but yeah, and then we did a little bit of editing, just to put like some names on it. Cause I know the writing then was, it was dreadful. Um, but it, it just, it widened my, kind of the right word, but like no expectations, but of understanding how many people, big businesses like Inter Milan, the top 10, top 15, most worthy financial club in the world, um, in terms of how much they're worth. And they're already now looking and exploring kind of those ideas. Um, and from then, yeah, it, it kind of made me more aware to how many big people out there and, you know, there's big, there's big social media personalities now we were, we're already adopting AI and, and doing various things with it. So that was exciting and that was really fun to do. I know we had some trouble with it because it was difficult to get certain general, like they still yeah. wanted certain things done in a really certain way and AI couldn't do that. Um, again, that's why I think certain jobs like voice acting, certain jobs like editing, I don't think they, yeah, I think they'll editing. probably come in more demand because you can't, you can't fully bend it the way you want to bend it. So you'll still need, um, those kind of people. Well, it's funny because that experience taught us because, uh, the, the, uh, company we were working with was not, it was not specifically inter, but it was, you know, a company that inter was their client and they were, we were providing this for them mm -hmm. to give to inter and we were, it ended up being posted, um, that was inter's post and we were tagged and I'm so proud of that. But what, before we got to even to that point. We learned that like there's, this was a design agency, right? And they, 
did not know how to use AI and they really, anything at all, they could do a couple basic mid majority images, but they were sort of familiar with chat GPT, but we've started seeing, and this was what I, not even a whole year ago, honestly, it seems like it was a lifetime ago. They didn't know what they were doing and they wanted somebody to kind of help them learn just the basics of anything because they had, they even had a uh, machine learning type of uh, a team that was there, the data science team, but they did not know how to use AI tools that uh, for me were like, oh yeah, I use these all the time. And you were starting to become more uh, familiar, but it was crazy because we started noticing like there's a, a lot of a opportunity out there just to help people with basic, this is what you can do with this. This is how you can do that. And looking at, um, did that also help you with your clients and how you were structuring your business, thinking about how you could use it to help people set up a website or to, for ads, ad campaigns or Google ads and different things like that. Yeah, it's, um, and especially on, on the, how the, the client, yeah, they, they are like their social media team were out there and they were designers and they just had no clue. And it was really surprising at the time, because you can kind of forget that when, when we're on the corner, we are on Twitter X, it's everyone is very business minded, very growth minded. They want to build something. They want to create something. So you kind of get, you kind of see this stuff all the time. And like you said, you were using these tools every day. Um, and you forget that it's a very small bubble and it doesn't replicate the rest of the world in, in any manner. And you just kind of make the assumption that big businesses and big companies are using this kind of stuff and they're aware of it, but they're not aware of it. They're probably aware of it now, but at the time they really weren't aware of it. And I think there's going to be a lot of jobs and stuff come up for people who are skilled in air prompting and things like that. Um, because these, these people just weren't aware of it weren't doing it. They didn't know how to utilize it. Um, there was a lot of noise happening at the time in AI, and I think people may be getting fun more about it, and they were just kind of like, we need to jump on this before we get left behind, um, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, 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 um, it's definitely shaped my, AI has definitely shaped my business in a few ways. Um, uh, it shaped my business that it basically wiped out what was writing for me because people just did, they, they were happy prompting two threads. I mean, I, I don't. I, I don't like, it's one of the things I don't like, um, using that for, but just cause I don't like it doesn't mean other people don't, you know, they do like it. Yeah. Other people like to use it and they can write and they can get engagement and they can make sales, you know, it's, and, and that may be an opportunity to look into for some people. Um, I pers I personally like writing for my newsletter. I, I wouldn't ever AI generate that, but there is, it made me aware that there's opportunities to use. AI generated writing for maybe certain businesses. Um, I know some people did it in ads and had good success. Um, and when it wiped out my ghostwriting biz, I kind of was just like, well, I repackaged what I did because I'd learned, I learned so much in SEO. I'd learned so much in ghostwriting where I'd start learning things in AI. Um, I understood social media. I understood ads and all these things and. Now I can just offer everything, um, as a kind of all in one package and just help people with their businesses and, and be a chief of staff like I am for you. Um, you know, have business calls, generate revenue, whatever. Um, and AI is creeping in more and more into that, um, with, with one of my other clients now, he was like, wait, can you just generate AI art for me? And just so I can have it like you have it as, you know, with alongside your tweets. And I was like, yeah, no problem. And, and he, he saw that as something like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Like, um, <laughs> just to create something a little bit different, but to me, it's like, yes, yeah, no problem. It's something. So it is, it is helping me do other stuff, um, making me aware, uh, and finding that right balance. Um, like I said earlier, I still mainly use, um, if for research purposes, but I know there's people out there who literally use it for everything. Um, and they do have success in their business. So it will be interesting. I read something the other day that they reckon by 2025, the end of 2025, that 80% or even 90% content online is going to be AI generated. Um, 
So if that's the case, that would be insane for starters. Um, I hope it's not that heavy. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who can generate in new stuff, there's going to be a big demand for them. And we always say adaptability is the best trait you can have, right? You can't, you can't be so stubborn that you don't, you don't do something else because that could be the end of you, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Adaptability, uh, curiosity, uh, resilience, all these things that will carry you through. And, um, we've had a great time. I would ask one final question is what, what, if you could, if you had, um, if you had money was no object, what would you, you learn or use or do with the things that you know are out there? Some of the tools that you think like you just can't because of money or, or connections, what would you really like to, if you just, to just do whatever you wanted, what, is there anything, any particular thing you'd like to use Sora or any, you know, type so, Sora would be Sora would be interesting to use. Um, I don't think, and, and this is where the money thing comes in. The money thing at a baseline level, I, I don't think it's that much of an issue. Where money comes an issue is we look at Luma, and Luma as an example right now. Um, you get what? 30 generations at the baseline. If you want 2000 generations, you need to spend $800 a month and things like that. Um, so unless you're a kind of a big business and you're going to use that amount of generations, you'd have to be very direct to use that. You can't go in and create an entire series right now, which is why you need a team of people. Um, Sora would be something I'd like to, I would like to use. Um, Kling, I know you need a Chinese mobile number. That would be, that would be interesting, but for now, yeah, for now. Um, but there's nothing out there, which I'm thinking, oh, I, I wish I could, you know, really dive into, um, Claude. The 3.5 that came out recently, science and stuff. Um, I've been poking around a little bit in that, and that is, and that's what a lot of people advocate about AI is that it's so, it is pretty readily available and it's only going to get more readily available. Um, so yeah. I'm, well, if I'm you could happy. do whatever you wanted, would you, would you be on social media at all? If you could have it your way and just live, you know, that you had Intel, you didn't have to worry about. If I, and things like that are rare. If I dream? had enough money, I would not be on social media. Not a chance. Um, I remember, I remember when we started on social media and a couple of boys I knew when we first like met and we were trying to navigate stuff. We said the dream was to make enough money on social media is that we would go off social media. Um, I think social media overall probably has a net negative on most people. Um, I'm very lucky that I'm in a position where it, it just makes me money. Um, and I think more and more people are starting to call on to that and more and more people are trying to jump on it. So more and more people try to find shortcuts in how to make money. Um, and that's where some people view it as, you know, not a very good thing anymore. It, it is difficult. Um, there's so many things we won't dive into that, but the problems with social media, but I'm blessed because it makes me money and I use it as a money-making machine. I don't use it as, as something where I just, I don't know why the people use it for really, um, post pictures of family or talk about run. No, not to me. It's there as a purpose, as a business to make me money. But if I had enough money in the world, um, I wouldn't be on social media. I'd be diving to the bottom of the ocean. I'd be climbing mountains. I'd be doing some just crazy stuff um, and living life, probably get a farm somewhere with a lot of acres, nice house. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't see me on social media. And that's the end goal. That's the end goal is to utilize it enough yeah. to get off it. Um, because I never really wanted a personal brand in the first place. I even, I even hate the word personal brand because it's so over stuff, but it's a very good asset to have and to utilize um, an end game, who knows. Hey, who knows? We might make enough money in crypto that we can, we can jump out early, right? But we'll, we'll see about that one. Well, my, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and that is, I hope that we still, you know, the remain in touch so I can see 
maybe you will still use some AI tools where like you can show me your dives and uh, your climbs. Yeah, like that. there you, you know, go. Like, that, I like mentioned... could you stream it out there to the world and, uh, you know, create maybe if then we get something like Vision Pro, where you, like I can be in the um, mountaintop with you or something kind of, or just share it with your friends and family. That would be cool. You know, now I, I look at cool. it kind of like that. But yeah, social media and the brand, it's um, it is a weird thing to come around to. But um, I didn't realize how much I'd enjoy teaching people and helping them see their uh, potential with mm -hmm. using different th telling stories and whether it's visual or written and just being able to get that confidence to be able to like change the, your life situation so that you could do whatever you want to do. And I appreciate so much that you helped me because I was working and I'm still working full time, but still um, just to see like that there is another possibility and you know it's not gonna things aren't gonna go your way all the time and it's a grind no matter what and mm -hmm. just having that mentality just keep going though you know don't worry about the little stuff just keep pushing keep pushing steady building the and not doing things that compromise what you are about and you, that compromise your integrity so yeah, I think that that's helped a lot in mm -hmm. to just that's, maintain that's a massive point. people's yeah. trust and respect and knowing your word is good. That, um, yeah. I appreciate that. And there's a lot that people don't really think about that much on social media. And they think just throw something up and click clickbait and how that affects you long term and learning those types of things. And you taught me well, like well, you could do this. You could have built me up to. You know, hundred thousand followers uh, like you, we right? Could have, like, for yeah. what? They were not that they were really invested in me. They didn't care about me. Um, but I have people with you know high engagement now that I can you know talk to every day. There's a certain group that, and it's shame because I don't play it like I should. But I'm not on here to do that. Where I have my certain list of top accounts. That I'm, you know, content, uh, you know, I'm commenting on every single post or have alerts set up for them. Mine are more people, just regular people. I try to find people who have less than like a couple thousand or even a hundred followers, and or if they if I see something they posted that's really amazing, and nobody liked it, you know, it's like, hey, uh, you know, I think that's awesome that you, you, a lot of people don't. Uh, they're too afraid to post anything like that. So a lot of people, just a little bit of boost of confidence. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, like, it, it's funny because there's a, there's a thing going around on money Twitter where we used to take, well, not make fun out of, but if there was someone with an egg profile picture, they were either broke or a millionaire. And it was so true. There was no in between. Like, you you don't know who's buying the oh. account, especially if it's an anonymous account. That's true. Um, but even even a personal account, you don't you don't know how much money someone's actually making. You don't know what they're doing, what they're building. You don't really know because it's so easy to be sly and be deceitful. And, um, and people, like, I know people that said, oh, I'd made 75000 from this launch. And then I know people who know them and it's like, no, they didn't make 75,000. They may have sold 75,000, but their actual net revenue profit was closer to 15,000 because of how much expenses they had. And then they try and sell a dream to someone else and people get sucked up pyramid schemes. And there is, there is a lot of big danger, but integrity and maintaining your integrity is, is number one. You, if you, as soon as you sell your soul, you're done. I know people who've had massive brands, massive things. They said the wrong thing once and they got done for. I don't, I don't agree with cancel culture, but you, you were lying and you were deceitful to people and you led people the wrong way. And you see, that's what people are doing in crypto as well. And you, but people, I know you're not seeing crypto as me, but they'll create a coin, advertise it to their followers, and then they'll just rock it. And then they'll, and they'll scam their followers out of thousands and thousands of times. Um, and it's the same in social media. So. It is. You can use it for the right reason. That's not, and yeah, we need to talk about crypto. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And they're out there and yeah. this news to judgment, are. right? Well, I wanted to play a game real fast and I for, almost forgot okay. about it, but um, to have a few rapid fire questions. Okay. So okay. 
How about we have yes or no questions or two option questions? Which one would you like to um, choose? I, I don't know which, which would be funner. Um, I'll do the two, two option. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think this will work for you. So let's do 10 or around 10 or so. Okay. The first is easy. Coffee or tea? Tea. <laughs> morning person or night owl? Oh, I'm, I'm going to say morning person, but I very much have been a night owl often, but I'm not a morning person. Okay. Beach or mountains? That's hard. Can I not have both? If I had, to, I know you live by you live by both. Yeah, um, they're both so good. If I had to choose one, I would probably slightly favor the beach. Um, but mountains, I love mountains. Okay, and let's see, travel by plane or train? Plane. Rain or snow? Snow. Let's see. Fishing or hunting? I'd say hunting. Roller coasters or water slides? Water slides. Hot or cold? Cold. And some of these are just too easy, but I'll ask them city or countryside? countryside but that was fun thank you i appreciate so much that you would be my first podcast guest and for helping me get to this point and i hope that everyone learned something new and we have a different take on our skeptics journey to generative ai and your hopes for the future and um what what do you think is going to happen or what you're worried about is going to happen so this is a, a forum for that, for people. And I hope that people that are skeptic can listen to this with an open mind and see that they're, I'm more of an evangelist, but I also recognize that a lot of people have concerns. The more people that understand what's happening and they learn a little bit about how it can be used and how to be, how to safely use it. I hope that we can have where it's a happy medium and people can use it for what they need. And, um, we'll just, we're, I'm not going to get too worried about us living in black mirror. Hopefully we will not. We are in some, some aspects, but, uh, yeah. at least we, at least we know what to look for. So I'm glad for that, but thank you so much. And, uh, you have a great day.